the material aspect of an exchange is pretty easy. The side who swaps a smaller piece for a bigger piece probably wins. But when we talk about swapping pieces of equal material value, then it comes down to time. In an even trade, one player gets the better of that deal if he recaptures with a developing move. Some players think they can head for an easy draw if they manage to swap all the pieces. But if they swap all the pieces at a loss of time, it makes their road to a draw more difficult. I said I was going to explore this theme with a modern game. Mench at Capablanca was played almost a hundred years ago, but I still think of it as a modern game. Opening theory has changed a lot, and computers have turned endgame theory upside down, but in general, chess theory hasn't changed much since 1931. In the 20s and the 30s, the hypermodern movement was new. When players of that day were showing that it was as good to control the center from a distance, the black pieces cooperate to control the center squares, than to occupy it. The white pawns occupy center squares, the black knights control center squares from a distance. Even these days, theory takes a middle ground on that. The classical approach of occupying the center and the hypermodern approach of controlling the center from afar are equally valid. But black has to take a stand in the center. We can also use this game to illustrate the old opening principle about not moving the same piece twice in the opening if we can help it. White's going to initiate two exchanges, both with a loss of time. Better would have been knight bd2 followed by rook e1 plus e4. That knight has moved three times to swap itself for a knight that's moved once. Bishop b5 forces the trade of another piece, but queen d7 develops with a threat just to capture the bishop. And when white makes the swap, another black piece comes forward. White has invested six minor piece moves in this. The bishop moved three times, d3, b5, c6. The knight moved three times, f3, e5, c6. The only times white should fall behind in development in a chess game is when black has given up material for the sake of time. DC is probably a mistake because it opens the position while black is ahead in development. White's best center pawn has also disappeared and black will be first to occupy the newly opened file. White's e-pawn is pressured twice and only defended twice. So if white is to move the knight to free the bishop and the rook, white has to do something about that pawn, so she moved it. The white bishop 
is hindered for the rest of the game by pawns on black squares. And the knight, in the meantime, is chased into the center of the board where it has maximum mobility and even inhibits the white bishop further. A better way to go might have been rook e1 plus knight f3 and bishop f4. Black gets ready to double his rooks on the file. This poor bishop went from staring at the b2 pawn to looking at the c3 pawn. The old chess writer Chernev showed a terrible flaw in bishop g5. Chernev pointed out the possibility of a swap and then a double threat of queen g2 and knight e2. Then the queen finds herself overworked because black can capture twice on d1. And then deliver a checkmate. B5 has a short-term plan of improving the knight's position with knight b6 to knight c4, where it hits b2 and hits e5. The long-term view is to give the bishop easy movement. When these pawns belong on white squares, so they don't hamper the bishop. King f1 is a peculiar move. Perhaps white is just ensuring that if black plays knight f4 plus queen g2 in the future, that it isn't checkmate. Black went on with his plan to post the knight strongly on c4. The bishop is still unhappy, blocked by a pawn of its own color. h6 is designed to keep the white knight off g5. Following the exchanges on d7, white might have continued with knight g5 plus queen h5 to make a double threat against f7 and h7. So h6 takes that possibility away. Queen e4 menaces the bishop. What a life this bishop is having. And queen c4, forking king and pawn, is also in the air. Swapping the queens is a pretty clever idea because black has a different way to win a pawn. Knight a4 forks the queenside pawns. So black did well to trade white's biggest potential counterattacking pieces before proceeding in this endgame. 